everyone it is diane here thank you so much for stopping by and watching another daily diy video of jenny and me let's go and start crafting hey everyone diane here with the new diy today i'm going to make something for the easter or spring season and i want to do it in the farmhouse style so i have two well what are they actually planters here they are from ikea jenny and i have them for such a long time there we go, a nice steel, and I think I'm going to give them a makeover into some pretty cute um, Easter egg hunt baskets. So if you want to see how I do that, then keep on watching, because we're going to craft now. First, what I want to do is I want to give the, these a different look, not the galvanized steel look, but more like a burlap look. And therefore, I have two sheets of really thick paper, crafting paper. And let me see how I can roll these in for the best option. I think starting somewhere here, just underneath the edge of the cup. And then hold this part and gently roll it further on. Look, and then you have your whole cup covered in paper. Of course, you still have to cut that off. But um, first, I'm going to cut myself a print, print it out, and then I'm going to apply a lot of glue here upon the uh, jars and then I will gently roll them into the paper with the print and then let it dry and then cut off the excess paper. I think I have even a better solution. I still have an original big piece of burlap and that is I believe much easier for me to work with. Now let me show you what I'm going to do. Oh, with a bit of a ruffled up piece that will be on the inside. Let's find myself this edge here. And then I'm going to glue that edge with the glue gun, which is here. Let me put it on heat already. And then just gently roll the burlap around the can until there. And then you can cut it off. And then you should have a perfect burlap basket. Okay, here we go. Make sure that you have enough glue in your glue gun, not like I do. Start off and then realizing that you need some more. Now quickly press the whole thing. Don't push too hard with your fingers, otherwise I believe you're going to burn them. Now let's dry the whole thing here. Wait a few seconds till it's completely dry and then we can continue putting dots of glue here along the edge and carefully putting the burlap in the right spot. Now the top section is perfect but the bottom section is still a little bit too wide as you can see so i'm carefully pulled off the bottom part and i'm going to stretch that up until well let's say here glue it together and stretch up the other part as well and then you have a perfect part for the back but that is why i said glue start gluing here at the section here with a line because that is the, you know, the bad section for the background.
that is it. Looks pretty neat. Only thing for the background is there is a little flap here. But I'm going to cut that off after the glue has been cooled down because it's still warm. And then you can easily just use the scissors or knife to cut off the excess part of the fabric. I'm going to do the same with the other cup here. I think using the bigger scissors for cutting out the fabric is a better thing. Yes. Perfect. Now this is the back and you put it on the back. No one sees it from the front side. The jars are completely done from the outside, but I still need to cover them up from the inside. So I have the idea making a printable for only the inner edge, not the bottom, but only the inner edge. And therefore I printed some really festive gingham, gingham, I don't know how to pronounce it, a printable from the internet. I tried to make it as large as possible. This is the thick paper that I first wanted to put on the outside, so I think it's also perfect for the inside. So let's start cutting. Oh, there is still hair from cutting the burlap in between the scissors, so now it's gone. That will do. Let's cut it out, and then I'm carefully going to mod podge it inside of the jars. Grab myself some action glue and two brushes. The cleanest one that will be for brushing out the air bubbles. Now let's carefully try how this will fit in. I think I have to make an angle. Yeah, otherwise I can't cover everything up. So this will be once again the back side here, this line. I'm going to start over there, and now you can't see a thing what I'm doing, but I'll show you soon. Because I'm in a bit of a struggle with the paper here. Something like this will do. Make sure that everything is correctly fitted onto the outer rim. So this must be it. I even I'm in doubt if I'll want to use the hot glue gun because it is not perfectly in but I don't think that would be a good idea okay I'm going to take it out let me first do both of the jars with glue I'm going to pour in quite a lot of glue also on the rim on the outer rim that is important is this the rim? Is it the, word, the right word that I'm using? Please correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not a native English speaker. Now carefully, or not carefully actually, divide the glue. Using a blow dryer helps speeding up the drying process, so I'm going to gentle blow some hot air into the jar. Okay, 10 minutes have passed by. 
time to put in, carefully put in, the stuff. I think rolling it up first is a good idea. As tight as possible. Because then I can release the paper when it's inside of the cup. there's way too much paper let me carefully cut off the excess part just lay down your craft and start cutting right away Here are some parts that still aren't filled up. Luckily, the glue isn't completely dry yet. So let me cut off some pieces that I can reuse. I think this will do. Cut straight and neat. And that is the good thing of these gingham pattern. Of course, we also need a straight line on the bottom, otherwise it won't work out. Now you can gently push it in the right position, just like so. First, of course, I need to glue this part and then cut off the excess part. The cups are ready to decorate further. Actually, I think it's much more fun to make uh, just a farmhouse theme out of it. So um, I want to do something with lemons because the color is yellow and it's a really good thing to decorate with lemons. Um, the edge is a little thick to work away with just a big part of a rope that I have here. So therefore I have twine. And I want to have the twine here underneath because you still see a little bit of the metal. Um, and I'm going to just wrap around with twine and the glue gun. So we first start in the back again. Put in some hot glue just to start with. And then I'm going to press my twine and just here and there, put some glue. And then pull it tight. If necessary, press it upwards with your scissors or another tool that you use. And I think two or three layers will do the trick. We'll see how much we need. 
because the big rope needs to do the rest of the work on the top section. Just like so. And then you get a really nice line of twine. And then the big part here we cover up later with some thicker piece of rope. Okay, I'm not going to annoy you further with this process. I'm going to stop filming and do the other can as well the same way. Okay, the twine part is done. Look, now the metal edge has been covered up. So we still need to do the top section. Therefore, I have this big piece of rope here. Let me put one aside because that is better to work with. So let's decorate our farmhouse baskets further. This is a bit of a ruffled up edge. Let's trim it just a little bit. Like so. I think I'm going to start here at the back. So just use a big dot of glue there. And then carefully laying the rope in the right place. Now let me press it and hold it for a few seconds. Oh, my thumb is stuck. Ouch. And then carefully laying your rope here while, of course, applying hot glue to the edge. Make sure that the paper inner circle and the outer rim with the twine are covered really well. Carefully going to press it together and hold it for a few seconds because, yeah, it's depending on the glue that you're using, but my experience with this glue is that I had to hold it so it can cool down. And I had glue before and that cooled down much uh, better or quicker, actually, that's what I wanted to say, than the one that I have now. It's just a different product. So make sure that you find out what works for you. And then we go like this. Look the difference and it is super easy to make. I'm going to continue. And I'm not going to disturb you with that process. Okay, I'll work my way around. Oops, now I'm going to cut off the rope. There. Now. This one here looks pretty neat, but if necessary, you can also add just a little bit of glue here in between. Press it firmly together, like this here. You lift up one piece of the rope, put some glue in, press it together, hold it there, and then it won't come loose again either. Okay, this was bucket number one. Let's move on to the second one. As a last finish on the cans, I'd like to give them some sort of letters. Unfortunately, I don't have stickers, but I have this big wooden letter box. Now, I'm going to make Lemon and Fresh there, or Lemon Farm, something like that. Um, let me first find the lemon. And what I wanted to do is then actually paint the back of the letter, and maybe I can stamp it upon the burlap. That was actually the idea. Here are the letters which I need. Now I'm going to grab myself a little bit of black paint and a brush. And then take a look that you have the letter in the right position. Paint the back side and then just stamp it upon there. This is the paint that I want to use. The blackboard paint Jenny and I used a lot. And therefore I also picked up the black letters. Sorry, I have to turn it over to here. Let me see. This is the back part. Now start with lemon. And the paint is really thick. wonder how that could happen. First, I'm going to grab the L again, or maybe the M is the best because that one is in the center and the center is here. Now, let me apply some glue in the center of this letter because we're going to glue it upon the center and because the surface is slightly round. Uh, where was the center? 
here. There we are. Continue with the other letters. The E is pretty simple. Hopefully I can still cover up the painted part from the L. Pretty shame that the stamping didn't work. I thought it was a really good idea, but nope. I'm going to continue until the whole words are upon the canvas. There they are. Aren't they cute together? Lemon fresh. Time to decorate the inside part. By the way, I can give you a tip if you want to um, make some sort of bucket idea, then just use this rope that I've used. Ooh, turn on the glue gun. <laughs> the thing was melting. Um, and make some sort of loop there. But I think they're cuter this way because I can use them as planters or anything else. To decorate, I have so many items. I have these flowers here, some eucalyptus branches, yellow hydrangeas, some sort of, well, what is it actually? This from Ikea, and I have some yellow, well, grass. That will be, I think, the base, because I need to have a little bit of a higher level before I can start decorating. And of course, I also have little plastic lemons. Okay, there we go. Are they, yeah, they are in the right direction. Oh, this is a big part. Have to rip it out of each other. Heh, <laughs> dusty stuff. Well, that it needs to be cleaned properly. I am such in the struggle with always with this stuff. Darn. Okay, there I have one part. Just going to fluff it up a little bit and then put it in. Of course you can also use use just another color. Let me use some more for the other jar. Fluff it a little bit and then gently pull it in. Now I need to fluff it up a little bit more because I don't want everything to be pushed down to the bottom. And this needs to be thrown away in the bag. Okay, there we go. Now, let me just clean this a little bit better. Time to put the lemons in. I have some lemons here. A few in there, a few in there. Of course, I have more because we need some more lemons in there. Let me see. Oh, they are a little bit lost. Uh, two, four, five, two, four. Yes, then this will be it. Now, rearrange the whole thing a little bit. And then we can just start applying small parts of greenery. A little bit like this. And I have some eucalyptus there. Here. Oh, that were two. Trying to put the highest greenery in the back because that is what you... Well, that's absolutely, absolutely just not the front side. So you may see some more greenery on the back. A little bit less in the front. Oops. Here. Now, just continue until you are satisfied with the result. I can also rip off parts of this here. This greenery from that branch. You can make so many combinations. What's also an idea is if you have... Well, let's say something like this, a big branch, just pull off some leaves and they look exactly, I will show you while I turn it around, exactly like the leaves of lemons. Look, now you can make your own lemon looking decor, much more realistic. 
than when you only put in some lemons and not the greenery, not the leaves. Just like that. And here you see the final result of this DIY. Isn't it cute? That was it for today everyone thank you so much for watching jenny and i hope that you had fun watching and we hope to see you next time bye everyone